Hello again, welcome back to the Homemade Haven. Today we've got work on our hands. We are going to start clearing out the area where we're gonna run our hot wire for our pig enclosure. If you've seen our previous videos about the pigs, we've had them on uh, Premier One electric hog netting and we've just been moving them a couple times a week, once a week. It was just a temporary fix. We're working on the permanent solution now. So our plan is to cut into this wood line you see behind me here. We're going in to the woods about 50-ish feet and cutting up, what did you say, about 150? Yeah, roughly 150 feet. That way we can 150 feet. Paddocks. And then back over 50 feet. That way we can get in there and cut out four specific paddocks um, for the pigs to continue to move so that they're not sitting in one area for the rest of their lives. We can move them down the paddocks and then back down the paddocks and um, try to save the ground a little bit and also put them to work clearing out our woods in here getting rid of all this brush and rooting up all the old debris that's in there. This will also give us the opportunity to bring in an intact boar whenever we're ready to breed and then that way they can have their own separate pens when it's not breeding season and it'll just give us a little bit more versatility than the one fence that they're in right now. about finished with day one of this project. I am whooped. We were able to get the full perimeter cut and cleared out and then um, basically we've got two more paths from the field to the back path that we need or two more yeah two more paths that we need to cut out. I will say that good tools go a long way. Had we not had these gas powered hedge clippers or the chainsaw this job would have taken I think we just had shears or I don't know. Good tools go a long way. So we're back out here today and we are ready to get started on the fencing. So we have gone in and cut out and cleared out our paths for our wiring and our posts. And today we are doing our best to try and figure out how to put this together. We've never ran hot wire before. And I guess this is poly wire, so it's a little bit different, but same concept. Never done it before, so we're just kind of um, winging it and seeing how it goes.
down an open top But we were clever not to take it too far Though it's hard not getting tempted Calling you up to see how you've been Cause don't I miss you And all those things we did back then Paddock number one. Yep. Now this project was um, one that I was a little bit intimidated by in the beginning, partly because I couldn't find any videos that went step by step, or very <laughs> few videos that went step by step on how to set one of these fences up. I was trying to figure it out in my head, which I think was part of the process because I'm more of a hands-on learner, and I was trying to have all the answers before I got started, which is a bad, a bad way to go about it. Um, and I'll show you here in a minute how I learned through experience and it shows in the quality of some of the connections I made but I will do a step-by-step -step overview on our next paddock on how to really make these connections for anybody following along will make the process go that much easier and smoother for you which is you know one of our goals here is to share what we learn with anybody that watches um, but we'll go ahead and give you a, a walk through a tour of how it's all set up and how we plan to use it and then if uh, you see anything that we should change because of your experience please let us know comment below yeah let us know up here at the front this is going to be the entrance point where we can bring in equipment with like like bedding or material initially we'll bring in their hoop house and their watering system through this gate and so this gate is these handles are spring loaded they hook right onto these clips here and we can take all three of them down and then move them out of the way and so now we can drive tractor in here side by side move their their equipment and our idea is that you know we have four paddocks that are going to run in line with each other and so as we rotate the pigs we can just let the gate down move their stuff from paddock one to paddock two and two to three and three to four and and so on very easy just move the gate and slide the stuff through we can move the pigs through herd them through as far as setup again this is gonna be a real quick overview i'll save a detailed video for a later time as we move down but um we've got six actual t-posts that we used on the corners of the gates and then the back corners of each or each corner of the rectangle in the back we've got Insulator clips that you just buy at Tractor Supply on a line. We've got, uh, I've been calling it poly wire. I don't know if they have another name for it or not at Tractor Supply, um, or if that's the name for it, I'm not sure, but it's basically um, woven electrical wire. We have tensioners so that over time, this is probably gonna sag a little bit. And these are just a, um, just a tensioner, you just, uh, just a crank. So you just crank it by one and it spools the wire up around it and, and pulls everything tight. There's four or five different kinds of posts that you can use. Um, we opted to go with these fiberglass rod posts. So it doesn't have, like a T-post has the flared in on the bottom. This is just a straight, a straight post with a, it looks kind of like a, like a broad tip arrow. Um, reason we went with these versus the step-in post. Our ground back here in the woods is real soft. And those step-in posts only go in about six inches. And so there were several that I had tried to put in that just didn't get enough bite. So 
opted for these rod style posts. And then there's a special insulator. That's what these little yellow pieces are called. There's a special insulator for the rod post. Be careful with these fiberglass posts. It's like fiberglass insulation. Um, if you don't have any kind of gloves or anything on, that fiberglass will get in your hands and it's super irritating. You can't see it, but you can feel it. I probably washed my hands with soap and like other stuff three or four times trying to get it off and it just had to work its way out. And then there's really only one or two other pieces that I want to show you guys. Come on. Or one of the other pieces that, that I wanted to show is they have these, um, it's like a pulley for the corners. Uh, I didn't attach these right. You probably shouldn't use zip ties or probably should just use regular wire or insulated wire. I use zip ties. Um, so we'll see how long those hold up. But anyways, what that does is it allows you to use one continuous string for each row. And when you pull it tight, it doesn't get bound up on the corner. The other reason we decided to go with these um, rod style post is this land that we're putting the pigs on probably sometime 30 or 40 years ago was logged and so there's a bunch of trenches or ruts that go throughout here where they drop trees and they ran their equipment so the terrain is real hilly these rod style posts make it easy for setting it up so you can contour the land so you can keep your poly wire you know three or four inches off the ground all the way around your fence and there's no you know no big gaps in your fence where the pigs or whatever animal you have can sneak underneath it tomorrow the plan is to move the pigs yep. test this area out yeah we have tested the electricity all the way through the fence and it's hitting pretty good and so we feel pretty confident putting them in this first pasture and seeing how they do and then i guess we'll just work our way down the wood line from here we have three more paddocks to go and now that we've done the first one i feel like they'll go fairly quick yeah. So our idea for moving them tomorrow morning is so that we can watch them all day long. Um, we could move them now. The fence is ready, but we don't want to put them on here at night and then there be an issue at midnight, 2 a.m. and they get out and we don't find them, you know, we don't we don't realize they're gone until tomorrow morning. Um, you know, when it's too late. So tomorrow hopefully we can watch them throughout the day, and make sure that they understand what this new fence looks like, you know, where, where their boundaries are and we don't have any escapees. So today's the day we are going to move the pigs over to pasture one, turn on the fence and test it out and see how they do in here. They have not eaten breakfast this morning so they're a little bit angry but I think it will help us to lead them into the next pen no problem we'll just get some food in the bowl. Hopefully they'll just follow us from one pen to the next and um, we'll see how smooth we can do this so let's get to it.
So we were successful. We were able to get our pigs moved into paddock number one fairly easily. They um, they weren't too sure about the strands. It's like they, they kind of related it to their other fence so they didn't um, test it right away. Once they got inside, they have tested it um, once a piece and have not gone back to it. So hopefully they will learn to respect this fence and stay off of it. Thanks for following along to see how we put this first paddock together. Be sure to come back to see a more in detail video of how we're doing the rest of our paddocks. We still have three more to go off of this one so that we can rotate them through the woods into four different paddocks four weeks out of each month. So be sure to come back to see that and to see how our piggy friends are doing here in the woods going forward. Thanks so much for watching. We will see you guys on the next one. Bye.